Let's continue on the topic of the future. The next presentation will be uh, given to us by Professor Mario Laurisin from the University of Tartu, and she will tell us about how Estonia copes with technological changes. She is also uh, the wellness and uh, cohesion expert of uh, a working group that is looking at educational reform for the year 2035. Good morning. I am very happy to be in front of people today that on a daily basis uh, develop the occupational system. Why am I happy? Because as the moderator said, I have uh, gotten caught, tangled up in a project that is very closely related to these topics. And Thomas Tomsar said, I'm here because Dia said to come, and nobody can say no to Dia. I think that's an Estonian particularity, by the way. We all have, uh, we, all, we all know people who, to whom we can't say no. And if you have the right, these people in the right places doing the right thing, then the whole of Estonia is moving forward. And I think that's our secret. And that's something that you can't make robots do. That is something that robots just cannot do. On the other hand, we are all very much certain that all oh, this robot business and this IT, uh, we are very good at it. And I'm very glad to uh, that, that that our previous speaker already showed the pictures that I would have showed, and uh, the actual picture is not that bright. We can manage with uh, what has been pre-prepared for us. In Europe, in the EU, we are in second place now uh, when it comes to the digitalization of uh, public services, which means that somewhere we had uh, the uh, boys with the ponytails, or well, they might have been girls, and uh, they might have been 100 or 75 percent or 50 percent uh, geniuses, and they came up with these systems that are uh, archetypal for others, and everybody abroad says, oh, Estonia, e Estonia. But if we look at the other side, if we look at the other uh, occupations that uh, on which our future richness depends, if we look at the classical um, economic uh, production service system, then we see that we are not in the front runners of uh, Europe. We are in the last third, which means that the answer uh, to the question, how does Estonia cope with the technological changes, uh, is we cope and we don't. And this don't side should make us um, work harder. We shouldn't worry so much, perhaps not, we shouldn't be that much concerned, but we should make an effort and we should know which direction to make that effort in. Now, this uh, crowd that I have uh, gotten uh, caught up with, uh, this working group, is looking towards the future and the future of education. So the OECD puts together the view of uh, the education system and the employment system, the workforce. And there is this uh, group that brings these ends together in a way that uh, so that the, the railway tracks that uh, go halfway through to a field can pass through the field to a city. And uh, we have problems. Uh, we have this education strategy working group. Some of uh, the participants are here today as well. And uh, we don't have very many people from the real business sector. So all of you here today, you should be involved in that process more. So that is why I am especially happy to be in front of you here today, because it's an opportunity to start a dialogue on, on a new level. Uh, we heard about uh, the Occupational Qualification System 20. Uh, I would like to now talk about the 40. But uh, where are we going and what are the opportunities in education? As it stands right now, right here in this same location on, the, uh, on February 8th, we have to present our results. So we are halfway through. So I don't want to show you anything in writing because everything is uh, changing right now. But there are some things that have become clear for us. We are of the same opinion. And they also have to do with what we've heard about here today. 
As the previous speaker said, and the one before, one of the main things is to understand where it, does the reason, uh, what is the reason why we constantly talk about the education that provides us with the uh, uh, knowledge and education, and then we have uh, the employers who say that I'm not happy with these employees. I'm not happy with uh, who's coming from the universities, the vocational uh, schools. And then they say, we're not happy with what's coming out of research. We can't apply it. So all the time, there's this divide or this chasm that we just can't fill somehow or cross. So to me, it seems that uh, we have uh, uh, a certain number of workshops that making keys. And then we have another set of workshops that's making the key holes. But we need to put these things together. Because right now we have uh, the locks with one shape and keys with another. So how do we bring these two things together? Now, at the point at which we have arrived is uh, we have to start looking at education uh, in a way that is more individually centered. So it takes into account the person's interests, capabilities, uh, and unlike robots, every person is unique. Of course, that's not an absolute truth, because as a sociologist, I know if I have a cohort of a 1,000 and I start analyzing it, then I see some patterns, and I think about seven to nine different patterns will emerge. Of course, it depends on the question or the, what, what you're researching as well. So we have arrived at the, the understanding that we have to look at the the education system, what schools and uh, all kinds of learning institutions are doing. So they should, they should be rather a path uh, along which a person of any size moves, and according to their own pattern, they will get complementary knowledge and information. So we, they would have a development that is as natural as possible. And on the other hand, uh, where should they go and apply those abilities, those skills? So this is when we get to uh, the occupational qualification system. I remember 20 years ago when it all started, Tia was so enthusiastic, uh, she so still is, but she was so caught up in this uh, challenge. And of course, this landscape uh, looks very good right now. But this uh, lock and key system is still not working very well. Now, if we talk about the education system and making it as individual and flexible as possible, we have to take into account all these different uh, patterns. Then uh, we have to change what we've been doing since the Middle Ages when uh, the when uh, basically a child was uh, sort of drafted into school and uh, put into a battalion and given a schedule and, and so on. And whoever is left behind is left behind. But you can't speed ahead and you can't move to a side and you can't veer from the course. So we want to break out of that. We want everybody to find every, each, their own path and to get as high and as far as uh, they want to. But uh, how does a person know about how to apply themselves in, the, in life? When I read about the Estonian Qualification Authority, which is now a big organization with many branches and uh, different civic society instances and uh, with employers, I see this huge network. But if I look at the meeting points in this uh, Network. I have to figure out where do, where do I fit in. I can't be a teacher. I looked at the teacher's uh, uh, occupational standard, and I, about 70% of it doesn't fit to me. But I even know I've been a teacher my own, most of my life. And I've been pretty good, I think. My students say so. But I don't meet the standards. How much time would it take for me? Well, I was just looking at the director uh, from... Uh, 
uh, my alma mater, if I wanted to teach so sociology there, if I wanted to take the course, if I say that I'm not happy with graduates, if I'm not happy with people who come to the university, if I want to go back uh, to school to to teach myself, then I get a whole list of things that I have to do, then another two years and another, and I say, no, thank you very much. Since uh, I, I've, I'm not sure if I can do this anymore. But see, this is a very inter a serious topic and it reflects how we have to be individual centered and how we have to look at the, the we, we can't put everything in packages and tie it up with uh, nice bows now the question is uh, how do we figure out what skills we need on the school side we would really like that also in the future as we heard mm, we would like to have uh, the occupational standards and the curricula match if we look at the curricula side I was just speaking to uh, the people who are developing pedagogical uh, curricula. They say that it's uh, it's horrible to match the curricula with standards that have been uh, put in place in the year X, and they are effective until the year Y. And uh, since there are new strategies coming out, and the standards are changing, and then you have to kind of come up with a curriculum to fit that situation. A few days ago, we had uh, the Estonian Education Congress uh, final day. Martin Saar, a young teacher, was uh, very coloredly talking about uh, the teacher's role, what the teacher has to do to meet all their responsibilities. And uh, he said that his main task to teach these young people and to deal with them, he has less and less time to do that because he has so many new forms to fill out. So how do we change the whole occupational system, the standard system, to be more flexible? It seems to be that we have to let go of something that has helped us a lot, but now is uh, uh, holding us back is this uh, German um, heritage that we have, this German thinking. What do I mean? I, I mean it has to be ordung, uh, order. So you have to put in place an order first, and then you have to fill in the blank, so to speak. Uh, we heard about uh, how the human and the robot uh, are sort of in contradiction, so we have to focus on our human side. But actually, the more we characterize or categorize everything, the simpler it will be for robotization. So we need people who deal with people who deal with nature. But if we have a static uh, system of classification, then uh, the easier it is th to think that those are the people that are not necessary because uh, robots can do this classification or the systematization, the systematization work much better. What could be the opposite of that? We are talking about uh, how the future work will be different. Future work will be different because of its uh, work relations, uh, because how time will be um, divided between work time and leisure time, workplace and uh, home as a location will be mixed up. You will be able to work by, uh, on the beach, in the forest, and so on. So these things that used to describe work in the past are changing in content. Therefore, we first have to think about how are we going to describe work. Before we go on to create standards or patterns, we have to describe it. Uh, in a, an example, the first question was, how long have you been uh, active in uh, occupational system development? I've been a teacher for 50 years. I've written dozens of curricula, so it seems to be about 50 years. But uh, I think that's not what the askers thought. 
they were asking about uh, this specific Estonian qualifications uh, system, these rules. So it's also about interpreting questions. So how do we uh, describe changing work and how do we bring, to get, bring it together with education? Lifetime, lifelong learning is no longer uh, a slogan. It's a very practical thing that has to be guaranteed by law. Uh, employers have come to understand it very well, but what should lifelong learning contain? Right now, it's like a wonderful big department store. Everybody is thinking about what they're interesting for him and then they or her, and then they go and they see where the most best-looking teachers are and where the most comfortable facilities are and where they have the best coffee. But actually, it's uh, the Estonian Qualifications Authority that says very well that the uh, uh, the occupation system has to bring together the needs for the skills and uh, the skills and the preparation for those skills. So if I want to do a work that's, uh, that fits my capabilities, uh, how do I find out where to go? I imagine it could be a platform that the qualification authority might manage. So my capabilities, my activities, all those describe what I do. Fortunately, the sociologists have also come to the micro level from the German Ordung level. I'm not talking about the nanoparticles here. <coughs> but uh, when it comes to, well, actually, rather, it, we have to look at the microscopic level of uh, work the actual skills for whichever practice that we are talking about. And that's quite complicated. If, if I say, for example, I don't want to be a teacher anymore. I want to work at my uh, local supermarket as the head of a department. I think their uh, displays are horrible. I would want to design things a little better. I want to find out uh, where do I have to learn? Where, do I, where can I do it and how long it's going to take? It shouldn't be three years, it should be three weeks. So if we had a platform where on the one hand uh, we have the input of uh, education, so curricula, new modules, so precisely modulated curricula that take into account uh, what the people know already, what the skills they have already, what their tendencies are, and on the other hand, you should have a description of uh, jobs. I wouldn't say the occupations, but the fields of activities, for example. In general education, some of the bases have been given. I think when it comes to technology skills, they, they will be more and more a part of general education. And if we're talking about uh, the big idea in education right now, and in a very interesting and important con uh, concept is a seamless education environment. So it's a seamless movement from general education to vocational education and between levels. So a 13-year-old boy or girl, for example, is a huge fan of chemistry, and they should be in a group uh, with some people who are in 11th grade, for example. Also between school and university and also hobby activities and general school. So here, uh, the work has to be described differently. So in, the, in certain jobs, you need uh, this and that technological skills. Then you need uh, some cultural skills. If you want to work in a, a shop, for example, you have to know that uh, you will have people from different subcultures who have different tastes. So you should know something about that. Then you should know this and that about human behavior. Then something about finances, uh, debit, credit, so on. And then you need to know something about digital things. So you have this whole pattern that everybody can uh, evaluate according to themselves. They can see which bits they already have, which bits they need to learn. And then if somebody makes a radical turn and makes a uh, um, a complete change, then they should also have the opportunity to get the whole package. 
So the qualifications authority has uh, a very Im important uh, role in putting all these things together, the changing labor force, uh, the work landscape, and changing people as well. So in our working group uh, that's looking at uh, work in 2035, it seems far away, but just think about it. I'm 78 years old. I will be dead probably by then. But let's say you're 40, you will be 57 by then. Do you want to feel the same way as a 57-year-old now uh, who is about to retire? Nobody wants to bother training them anymore. They're tired, their back hurts, their eyes hurt from being at the computer. They can't sleep right. Or would you like to be youthful, fresh, uh, adaptable, athletic, and so on? So what do you do? It's, this is a very introspective moment. But now look at your children. Many of you have children who are probably in school or just going to school. Some of you have uh, grandchildren. Maybe they were just born or they are in kindergarten. Maybe they're going to school soon. A lot of you have children in school. Think about where they are in 2035. They are probably graduating. So for them, is that's why we're making all the changes. They are coming to school having had access to smart devices uh, since the age of two. They know how to find answers to questions nobody's even asked them. And this means teachers, they need new skills. And this qualification standard doesn't contain them right now. Right now, the standard says they have to be a mentor. But what does that mean? So we have to think about uh, definitions, significations, uh, and their changes changing children, changing uh, middle-agers who don't want to be old at the age of 55. And if we go in with a microscope like this, and then if we, then we, if we look back just through our regular eyes at the path that's ahead of us, then we find the point where the occupational world and the education world will come together so that the keys will open the locks and the employers will no longer complain about the education system not providing what they need, but they will say that they couldn't even expect everything that the education system provides for them. Thank you very much for a very interesting uh, presentation. Let's take questions right away. I will take the first one from uh, our online application. First question, how do you find balance between uh, curricula taking into account uh, the current needs and future needs? Well, it depends on the curriculum. I have to say that unfortunately, uh, two processes, for example, the, pro the process that is actually taking place in a business and in the school, they go at different speeds. When we develop a curriculum, we think about uh, the five to seven year perspective. But uh, if we ask a business what, what they're doing in five to seven years, they say, oh my gosh, I don't know, I might be bankrupt, I might be in a different field. So everything that is short term, uh, short-term training courses, short-term changes. Anything that been, can be achieved by education and uh, labor working together, that's important to, to have those links on a daily basis and to have them function better than they are today. So in our work, in the work group, uh, we are also looking at in-house training and the employer's role. And I'm very happy to know that we have a partner in Thomas Damsar and this whole uh, set of employers who are looking at uh, apprenticeship, in-house training, how that should be uh, organized, how the state should support it, how employers have to act, what is needed so that we could say that this is the main road that uh, will take the employers to uh, satisfying their needs. So we, we need to have some sorts of, some kinds of um, keys at least. We need some keys. 
So a comment. If uh, employers don't know when they, they, they will be in five, seven years, isn't that strange? I'm afraid that the, the situation is such as it is. Of course, it depends on the size of the business. But uh, if we consider the fact that we are very much focused on startups right now, then we know that in seven years, they are not uh, startups anymore. They are big uh, branches or bushes or trees. And if we look at the old companies, if they bring uh, belong to uh, Swedes or Finns, then uh, that's not the best option either. So in any case, in some areas of business, uh, things are more stable. But I think a permanent status of our labor market is volatility. And that is why, through education, we have to clarify what are the transferable main capabilities that are needed in uh, whichever field. And these have to be described. So actually, the base of the cake has to be that regular uh, synthesis of uh, general and uh, vocational education. And uh, whatever goes on top, the decorations, is uh, what provides the match with uh, the actual vocation or uh, occupation. So we want to reach a point where everybody who finishes high school can also take some kind of a vocational test or exam or occupational qualification exam. Any questions from the audience? <coughs> Just raise your hand, please, and we will get the microphone to you. Any hands? No. We'll have to go to our app. Estonians are very much fond of their uh, devices. Uh, occupational qualification standards, experts uh, put them together. So how do we get closer to them meeting actual needs? So experts from the field, that's um, a very great concept, but they are different as well. We have theoreticians in, who are experts in the field. They teach. And then we have experts who are employers. Then we have experts uh, who are trade union members and so on. So these uh, experts in the field, they also have different viewpoints. And uh, they, their group has to be compiled in a way that we get a bigger picture of the horizon. And that is why we have to think about the particular field that we're talking about and then look at the common problems that go through different fields. So then we have uh, we have the general level, the occupational level, and then the, the actual employment or the job level. But if we want to develop in-house training, for example, uh, mentorship in in the workplace is important. People with an academic education who are very much welcome uh, with, by employers. Right now, a big problem that we're talking about is that uh, research is not contributing to in innovation development. But we don't have jobs for those who get doctoral degrees after the university. Here we had a question about uh, the minister's uh, qualification uh, standard. Well, the minister should have a doctoral degree or maybe uh, the head of a department in a ministry or, well, the owners are owners in businesses, but uh, in any case, uh, some uh, high places should be reserved for those with uh, a doctoral degree or at least it's uh, welcomed. So if in that for example, a researcher feels that their project uh, uh, has potential. If there will be a stipend or some job attached to this, their doctoral studies, uh, then that's uh, a high motivator. So I think we much more have to intertwine the academic world with the business world and to see where the mutual points of enrichment lie. Last chance from the audience to ask live with the, the help of a microphone. No? Well, let's turn to our digital means.
According to you, the occupational standards right now, are they wrong or are their contents erroneous? Well, standards have played a big role in organizing the whole landscape, but uh, I think they are very uneven. Just out of interest, I looked at uh, the standards for teachers, uh, and I really was aghast after I looked at those. Then I looked um, at another uh, quite mythological um, job for an Estonian is a, a harvester driver or in forestry. So they have to know about the ecological side of their activities, and I'm not sure how they handle that. Uh, will they do it if they don't like it? Will they cut down a tree if they don't want to? I mean, are they allowed to do things differently than when they've been ordered? And then, I, out of interest, I looked at the, the IT uh, field, and you know what I discovered? It's uh, the, the teacher's job is has been uh, described in a more detailed way, and actually the teacher ha should be the most flexible position. So the harvester has to know about the ecological knowledge, which I think will only make them miserable. And then the less prescriptions you have for IT uh, jobs, because uh, IT people I, perhaps are so uh, so good at their jobs already that they know better than any standard writers about uh, what they need to do and uh, how they need to change. So I think we should move towards uh, general frames that can fit very different kinds of patterns. So this there should be a base of general competencies and then everything should be built on that. Thank you very much, Professor Lauristin.